Hi, this is John. Welcome back. This is the Idaho Meat Cutter. Today we're going to break down a round and cut it up for you. You can see this one has been already taken off the carcass. What I always tell people is we want clean meat. This one's fairly clean. Has a lot of fat on it, which we'll trim off. So again, if you can hang this up, it's so much easier instead of putting it down on a table and trying to do it on a table. I've seen people hang a rope up in their garage. You can put it on a swing set outside, your kids a swing set, whatever, to get it up where you can work on it levelly. Okay, so we have here, we have a ball socket. Okay, if you look here, if you look at the bones, we're gonna show you the structure of bones here in a minute. But we're gonna break this down. This is a sirloin tip that sets in here. You can almost see how it is designed. It comes right around here. You can see and feel a bone right here. So that's our first cut, it's right underneath that bone. So, right there I hit the bone. Right there, it goes underneath the bone. You can actually see these. So if we wanna go until we hit the bone, I just hit it. Now we wanna turn our knife and come down along the bone. These hooks, you can grab hold and pull down. Okay, if not, you can use your hands, but it's so much easier with a hook. We're going to come down to that ball socket right there. Okay, now we're to the ball socket. You can see the bone in here. Now we're going to grab our hook and we're going to take and cut an angle. It's about 45 right through here. And we're going to lay that on the table. Now that's your sirloin tip. We'll show you how to cut that in a minute. Next, we're going to take a bony knife. These are six inch flex foresters. We're going to go right underneath that ball joint again. And we're just going to cut. Grab your hook again. You hit the bone, we're up a little too high. Now we're right underneath the bone there. And that will be your top sirloin. Okay. So next, put that to the side, we'll break the round off the bone. So we have your socket and your bone. This is actually, we're going to show you a bone here in a minute. This is your hip joint. This is your main leg bone. This is your knee, which is a bony, really bony part of your body. Okay, if you come up here, this is where your ankle would attack. So you have your ankle, your knee, your hip socket. So we're going to go right in here and some animals you can see better than others. You almost see that crease in here. Kind of comes back through here and right at this knee. So we're going to aim for the knee. So if you want, you can just take and kind of make a cut like that. Come around right here and make a cut like that right to your knee. Now we're going to just follow it out. If you do it right, you're going to hit this socket. We're going to go right underneath the knee bone now. And as you start going down, the weight of it will start pulling it off the bone. So when you get down this load, you better grab hold of it because it's going to come off. So now we're down to the hip joint. This is where your pelvic hooks on. Now we have your round. Okay, so again, this ball joint, where your hip and pelvic comes together, your knee, your ankle. Okay. We're going to have leave that there. Next section right now, we're going to go ahead and cut this up. So let's pay attention and we'll get ready to go to on that. Now we're working on this round bone. Again, we're going to cut this up. Here's the bone we pulled out. Again, over and over. This is your bone where your socket sets into your pelvic, into your hip. This is your knee. You can see it flexes. You can see how bony it is. I always tell people, I've been teaching meat cutting for a long, many years, is you've got to learn the design of your bone. Okay, here's your bone, it goes up to your ankle. 
So again, if you would think of your body, hip, knee, ankle, and you can see how that bone is shaped. So now we've got all the meat off that. This goes in the trash and the stuff we took off earlier. This is your sirloin tip. Again, we cut these just like we would in a grocery store. So when you get this at home, you know exactly what it is. This has a flap on it and a silver side. Over here, you can't really pull on it, but the silver side you can. So you wanna grab this, or if you have your hook, grab into that silver side and just start pulling. This is elk, so it comes off pretty tough. Take your knife in there a little bit. If it won't come off, use your knife. This will actually, there's two purposes for this piece of meat here. We'll show you here in a minute. Now you have a really nice, some people call it a ball roast, some call it a sirloin tip. We can make a roast out of this, but it does make really, really nice steaks. So we're gonna set this here. Again, standard cut at a grocery store is three quarters. And we're gonna cut it three quarters. And this is how we begin. Again, we don't saw the meat, we slice the meat. So we're gonna go all the way in and all the way back. A little fat there, we take it off. Again, your wild game taste comes from the bone and from the fat. The more fat you take off, take all the bone out, you'll have a lot better quality of meat. This came off a fairly large elk. Idaho has pretty good sized elk. And we usually cut down pretty far. You'll see the difference here in a minute. You'll start seeing more silver, a little more gristle. So that's the far as we go down. So we have two, four, six, seven, eight steaks. That's pretty normal, six to eight, okay? So that's your sirloin tips. And they do look really well. Next is your top sirloin. Again, this is not a race. We're trying to take our time. You might notice on your elk or your deer that how black that turns, okay? All this is exposed to air now. We just cut this so it looks nice and red. If we would leave that out for a week or so, it would look like this. At our market, our plant here, we take a lot of this off just to make the consumer and the people happy. Plus, there's a bacteria factor in here. This nice thick fat, if you look at that on this elk. This elk's doing really well. We're gonna skin this off. Again, it's not taking large chunks off, it's taking a little off at a time. So we're just gonna go just barely under the skin. This helps it, cleans it up. Again, these hunters were out in the field and there could be a little bit of dirt ground in here. Here's a couple of little pine needles. You surely don't want that in your hamburger or your steak. So again, we're just getting rid of the debris and the bacteria. Clean it up here. That doesn't take a long time. Now it looks so much cleaner. Looks like what you just cut open, okay? We're gonna flip it over now. This is your top sirloin. Look at the fat on that. This elk's been eating very well, eh? Of course, can't eat the fat, throw it away. Again, we're not in a race. I'm using a steak knife at this time just because it's wider. Here's 
Here's my little bony knife, I can use it. Just a lot smaller. There we go, we got most of the fat off. Okay, now we're down to meat. Okay, now you got your top sirloin you pulled off. This comes off the underside of the pelvic. Turn this a little off. On your top sirloin, you'll have this gristle side. You can definitely tell. There's a flap here, it sets here. You can leave that on there. Some people don't. At your stores, you do, because this is worth a lot of money. So that gristle side, so you do not want to cut on that side. You want to cut on the opposite side. Lay it on your table. We're gonna straighten it out. Little pine needle there and some fat, you see it? We're gonna get rid of it. Again, hunters, keep care of your meat. So now we're gonna cut these three quarters inch. And this is a long steak. I'll cut a couple and then show you. the size of that steak that is the top sirloin that's what you get at the restaurant of course with meat prices going up more and more people are hunting so again keep carrying your meat it makes it so much easier and less waste we're just about done we're about to that gristle part so this will actually start getting tougher and tougher. So, we have a couple pieces of meat here we just pulled off. If you were making jerky, you would take a little more of the silver off. Okay, and you could slice this real thin. And it don't go to waste that way. Okay, now you have strips of jerky that you can make. Or, this guy doesn't want jerky, you can cut a little thicker and all the ones you have, stew meat, which is pretty tender. So there's different things to do with your scraps instead of just throw them all in the hamburger. Same with this piece. You play with it a little bit, take that gristle out of there. Now you have chunks of meat that can go in the hamburger, but you also, here you go again. You have some nice lean stew meat. But this gentleman doesn't want stew meat. He'd rather have hamburger. So now you have your top sirloins. So we're here for hamburger later. Now we're gonna do your rounds. The rounds are big. They're sloppy sometimes, and they're a good sized chunk of meat. That's heavy. But first, again, you clean up your meat before you do anything. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Again, just take your time. Try not to waste any meat. And just slice it off nice and slow. Again, this doesn't take a whole long time. You're eating this. Plus you get rid of bacteria. See, that didn't take any time at all. You'll have a silver side here. This is where the bone set in there that you pulled out. And there's a seam in there. Okay, we're gonna seam it and cut the rump off. Okay, the rump is this section right here. It's the end of the round. And this is where you make rump roast out of. And 
you basically square it up. And now you have that. This rump roast, if you can see it, this is where they gouged it with a knife, trying to skin it or get it off the bone or whatever they were doing. So now we have to go in and clean it up. Our motto is here, if it doesn't look good and I won't eat it, it goes in the trash. see every place they took their knife and gouged it. Bacteria gets in there. We know it's hard out in the field to do all this, but again, just take your time. It's, it's just not a, a giant race. Okay, you can see how I just took that and twisted it over. Now, we'll tie that and that'll be a nice rump roast. Pretty easy. There you go. The silver side is tough. Any piece of skin that's in, in the seam seems to be really tough on any animal. So again, we're just going to take our time and take it off. I like squared mine up. You can see it's not very square right now. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this section off. Again, you can do a lot of things with that. You can see how lean that is. Again, we can slice that and make stew meat. We can slice it and make jerky out of it soon as you get this layer of skin off. You will make your jerky tougher. If the family was bigger and you needed a bigger rump roast, that's probably two and a half pounds. Let's make it three pounds now. I will set this like that. I will tie a string around it. Now, instead of two and a half, you have a three pound roast. Again, here we go. Let's make some more stew meat. Okay, and look at that. That is very lean. I'm gonna cut a couple of round steaks in a minute. Then I'm gonna seam this out. So again, way too much fat on this animal. You notice how I keep my knife not down, but flat. And I don't think it's taken us very long to cut this so far. This just takes a lot of practice. Like I said, we've been doing this for 44 years, so it might look easy. Okay, now we have this round here. We're going to cut a couple steaks and we're going to seam it. Show you two different ways to cut. The reason I seam some of these because you can see how long this is compared to my knife. It's a big piece of meat. So it's intimidating to try to cut all the way through here and get these steaks to come out right without doing a lot of sawing. Again, you can see that's as long as my knife. So right now you have a round steak and they're large. Or we can make it easier for a lot of the people. And there's a seam in here. If you can see me open that up, you take your knife just start cutting a little at a time and if you open this up and follow that seam you can start seeing the different cuts of meat especially in the grocery store okay now you have different types so if you were look at this this biggest part is your top round that's a very expensive piece of meat a lot of restaurants use this of course, now we got this open, we're going to go ahead and cut that off. Now it even looks better. So now you have your top rim. Okay, this section right here is known as the bottom round. If we would seam this out, this would be an eye around. 
So bottom round, eye around, top around. We're gonna go ahead and cut this stuff out. If you look in here, every round will have a gland in the middle of it. You do not want to eat the gland. And it simply just looks like that. We throw that away. This guy wants steak, so we're not going to cut the bottom round eye round apart. We're just going to go ahead and cut steaks now. So again, three quarter inch. It's a lot easier now. If you pull the eye off, you can make a roast out of it or go ahead and cut little steaks out of it. This just makes it so much easier, especially if you don't have a large knife. And with knives concerning knives, have a good one and have a sharp one. Back to the top round. Again, we can make a roast out of this. We can go ahead and make steaks out of it. A lot of plants that people order strip jerky, this is where they make their strip jerky out of. They just take that whole top round, slice it paper thin, and make their jerky. If you have the time, take your top round, take your bottom round, you could even take your sirloin tip, put it on a piece of paper and a, and a tray, stick it in your freezer, depends on your freezer, for about 35, 45 minutes. This stuff will firm up and it's a lot easier to slice. So again, piece of paper, some kind of tray, stick it in your freezer for a while and it sets up, especially jerky. A lot of your plants will put it in the freezer for a short time and throw it on a meat slicer. Right down to there. We cut this off just to make it look more presentable, nicer. So now, here we go. We've had all this meat here. We have your top round, your bottom round, put them together, and it makes a whole round steak. So we have your round steaks, your rump roast, your top sirloins, sirloin tip. That all come off your butt end of your animal. So if you would look at this, there's a lot of meat here. So just keep care of it. This has been John, I don't meat cutter. Thanks for watching.